So for the last three weeks, I've been looking for a job in the CPO industry. And one of the main ways I've been trying to get a job is dock walking. So over these three weeks, I've sort of gained up some experience on how to dock walk a bit more effectively. Some of the mistakes that I've made, um, I've sort of patched those up. Um, and I thought I'd give you five of my tips to hopefully help you if you're uh, trying to dock walk. So tip number one is timing. Um, make sure you're not going down to the docks too early. One of the mistakes that I made was I was going down to the docks around like 7 a.m. and the crew just simply aren't out on, on the boat at that time. They're either like having breakfast or they're, they're kind of doing something maybe inside the boat and there's not a lot of people to maybe talk to out on deck so you can't really approach a lot of people at that time so it's probably not the most efficient. I'm coming across a little bit of a problem at the moment where there's no one actually on deck to talk to. Um, to like approach them to ask for like jobs and stuff. So um, I've been sort of just waiting around a little bit for people to come out. Obviously you do want to be there as early as you can get to the boat and approach so you're looking keen and looking proactive. Um, so I'd recommend maybe going around nine o'clock, 9.30, when, when the crew is on board to actually approach and talk to you. And then from there, you can dock walk through through the rest of the day for however long. Another good time is probably around four or five when the boat's sort of packing up um, and everyone's getting ready to leave. Some people might be leaving the boat and you can catch them as they're coming off the passer rail and you can hand out your CV to them um, as they're passing by. So number two is going to different ports. So try not to stick to the same port every time. You're obviously getting more familiar with one particular port and it, it's obviously you're kind of in your comfort zone, like you what you know exactly where the marina is, you know where the boats are, you kind of know the layout and you you're you're getting really used to going around that port. But what I would say is branch out to as many ports as you can because it's kind of a numbers game if you hand out your C V to say uh just one marina, you're limited to only those boats. Um so if you just uh, go to a different port around, around the corner. So for example, I've been based in Antibes and I've been going to Monaco and working my way back to Antibes, um, stopping off at sort of every port along the way. It just means it's just the numbers game. So you're just, you're just handing out your CV to way more boats. Um, it means it gives you a, a higher chance of actually getting a job. But number three is keeping your CV updated. So it's really important to keep your CV updated so that captains can see all your most relevant work that you've been doing recently. Um, so put your day work on there, um, update your time that you're available, update your location, um, make sure it's as accurate as possible because um, <clears throat> it just helps the captain out a lot more um, to get an idea of you uh, and your experience and what sort of value you can add to that boat. Number four is trying to stand out a little bit. So this is where like trying to be original and being a little bit creative with your CV um, might help you out. So for example, I heard of someone who printed out uh, their CV on slightly thicker um, paper, a little bit more expensive, but they printed their CV out on thicker paper so that when their CV was stacked up in a pile of so many, uh, their one stood out so the captain could be like what's this um, is it sort of like even meant to be in here pull it out and realize that it's someone that's made that extra effort to um, make their CV look a bit better and stand out from the crowd so maybe just being a bit more original being a bit more creative trying to stand out from the usual CV so number five is uh, patience so you kind of want to be a little bit patient when it comes to actually s approaching the boat sometimes there might not be crew that are on the deck that are easy to like talk to, easy to um, sort of approach and, and ask um, if you can hand it your CV to them. So maybe just wait um, 30 seconds to a minute. It doesn't have to be too long, but most boats will have a camera and it's pointing towards the passerelle. Um, and you can normally, if you wait there for a little bit, if someone sees you on a screen inside, they can come out and approach you um, or just, just wait a little bit. If some people on the top deck, they might see you um, uh, and, and come down and come and meet you. So being a little bit patient um, at the passerelle can, can help you out quite a bit. I've been in a situation where I've seen deck hands on the, on the sun deck and they've just been working um, and they haven't seen me for a while. So I kind of just waited there for a little bit, sort of tried to grab their attention and then wait for them to come down, give my CV to them. It's better than just being like, oh, um, they're probably busy. I'll just, just kind of move on. Just, just be a little bit patient, wait, wait for them to come down. And, and then that way you can hand out, hand out another CV. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Um, I really hope those tips were useful for you uh, and you can actually implement them and use them yourself. Yeah.